You're listening to the gag on this podcast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> T- typical woman always trying to get the man's money. Am I right, guys? <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, go on there. <laughs> <laughs> then you might get the money. Okay, <laughs> I like how I like how Nate's not Nathan's just like, I'm not even gonna wade into those waters. <laughs> no, my, my wife's the breadwinner, so I can't risk it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because you're a comic. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> it's a, it's a, wait a minute what the heck is that for Ouch. it's against system I'm not, <laughs> cannot right. complain all right this is the gag on this podcast episode description we'll have the show and guest social media like and follow us everywhere at gag on this underscore pod subscribe to our youtube page hear the episode two days before it's released also see our beautiful faces uh, like what you hear, leave a review. Hate what you hear. The Duggars are looking for a new son. Hey, uh, if you become a Duggar son, you get sisters with benefits. Oh, <laughs> oh, ah, but I'm not the one fucking my sister and <laughs> sister it to right. kitty porn. <laughs> um, I am Big Nick. I'm joined by uh, nationally traveling comedian, Italian stallion, Danny T. Hey. Hey, 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 we got my uh, Portuguese lover and co-host of the Stand Up Dads podcast, Robert. Hello. Host of the Iambic Poetry podcast, Vice President of SAC Poet Society, all around good guys, Sharon. Hold on, everybody. And we are joined by the hilarious Nathan Goddamn Owens. Woo. Woo. Oh, thank Woo. you. That's a great intro. That was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> How I roll. <laughs> but uh, before we get into it, though, um, I do want to share something. Nathan, every now and then uh, we see white people doing stuff that's stupid, uh, trying to be hip, trying to be inclusive. So I just want to share another instance of uh, white people being dumb. (laughs) I've seen this. Yeah. So apparently Walmart is in hot water because they uh, had celebration edition Juneteenth ice cream. (laughs) Which is swirled red, red velvet and cheesecake flavored. Mm. No chocolate. That's kind of messed up. That's what I thought too. Right? I was like, I'd <laughs> be too on the nose, I think. <laughs> but wait, wait. There's more. <laughs> There's also party plates. It's freedom for me, guys. Ooh, that's bad. Wow. I did not see that. That's rough. It's freedom for me. Wow. Now, is this worse than when Ikea last year oh, yeah, added fried that. chicken? <laughs> they didn't have the plates. Which one's worse? <laughs> Nathan, do you know about that? What Ikea did for Juice? Hey, I hadn't heard about what Ikea did. <laughs> they just... Was I'm, it, I'm scared to ask at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> was it for Juneteenth or was it for, it was for Black Juneteenth. History Month? It was, okay. it was for Juneteenth. They Strong. added chicken instead of, uh, in addition to the meatballs for... Uh, Juneteenth and, and green. They said, right. come into Ikea and get some soul food for June, Juneteenth. And then they, uh, and it was like a bunch of white people on there just saying like, we, we, we strongly suggest you come in here. And it was like fried chicken and collard greens and something else. Some cornbread. I think it's implied <laughs> that it's a bunch of white people when you say Ikea. <laughs> yeah, probably. They, yeah. I mean the, the Swiss, I don't think take enough jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so look the fact that they're laying out there i i say we take every shot you want what you know the Swiss chef? <laughs> like the army knife is not a good weapon so we'll start there he um, is swedish oh they're swedish what i <laughs> yeah i said that right you said swiss, swiss? yeah this is the same make clocks. Oh, yeah. Sweden, Switzerland. S- Sweden, Switzerland, whatever else is over there. <laughs> like Swedes. it's it's all wow. the same thing. It's all people that I cheer against in the Olympics. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're like really good in the Winter Olympics and then Summer Olympics. They're just like, we'll we'll see y'all when it snows. Yeah. I don't know if they're <laughs> they're like, we burn easily, our blonde hair and blue eyes. We're cool. We're good. Yes. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll compete when it's under 40 degrees. Yeah. When it's overcast, maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way because we as white people just fucking suck. What can I say? We're not good. We're not good at celebrating black things. I'm supposed to be. We're supposed to be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not our holiday, remember, dummy. Remember Arkansas? Remember how that whole meeting thing went down? What? No. What? what are you talking about? Remember the poster with the Arkansas with the three white people oh, on it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. So so guys, like, what the hell am I yeah. doing? Why yeah. am I here, Nate? So we will we <laughs> I mean, I just think we just white people need to just go on probation just about six months. Like it doesn't it doesn't have to be a ton. Like it doesn't have to be great. We just all need just as a community to hit the snooze button socially. <laughs> and can it's celebrate like, the NBA championships <laughs> <laughs> and leave it at that. <laughs> uh, well, they celebrate the draft. Why don't <laughs> They who's they Strong, that just huh? reminds them of the old slave trading <laughs> days. That's not good. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I'll take that one. He <laughs> looks like a breeder. <laughs> you know, it's bad when Danny D of all people is sitting there just like, oh, OK. <laughs> I'll right. just keep my mouth shut like a good lady. Well, let's Rich not scare- white people buying black people. It's let's sad. not scare Nathan away because we do have some stuff to talk about that concerns you. So don't hit the the snooze button yet on us. Um, so first of all, one one thing I came across, um, you were in a zombie film. Oh man, yeah. I I mean, when you start comedy, you have the delusion that whatever is next is your big break. And so I was like, well, definitely acting. You know, comics. They jump into acting real quick. I was maybe three years in and I, I did a, an independent short film in Milledgeville, Georgia. And they were like, you're either going to be a soldier or a zombie. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure which category you're putting me in. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we have we have special forces soldiers or we have monsters that eat. And I was like, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been to the makeup chair and uh, I did that. I was in the makeup chair for like two hours. The people were amazing that did, did the makeup. I was a zombie for uh, 14 total seconds of screen time. I got shot and then I just drove like two and a half hours back to my house. And that was it. <laughs> I don't know how well the film did. I don't, I didn't follow anything up about it. I just, was I was like, film? The film, I, th- I think it was called like Strained. It was one of those like, like we- like bad zombie names. It's like mysterious, like trying to be mysterious, but instead you just were non-descriptive. Sure. And like nobody, like it could have been about anything, and they just thought they were being scary and mysterious. And it was like, no, no, you need to, you need to guide people somewhere. Like this is the <laughs> Milledgeville Film Festival. Like you need to give people <laughs> some detail. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I was, I was a zombie. I got shot immediately. And, uh, then I got to lay on the ground. <laughs> I just got to lay on the ground for two, ta- for two other takes while dialogue happened above me. Definitely <laughs> worth the drive. Definitely worth the drive. And as you guys can tell, it's my big break because everybody, yeah. everybody listening knows exactly who I am. And we all know who you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Zombie and we number three, the movie. Though. <laughs> 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 zombie you know there they saw somebody saw it and they were like we got to get that guy like that guy his grunting like you can't teach that you can't teach no. grunting and sad sprinting i don't remember what movie it was <laughs> but i was watching it with my kid and the credits were running by it and there was a credit for ugly man and i'm like oh fuck it's like there's my big break but i have to be this guy i i don't know yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping my eye out for the big break. I think it's going to be either a clumsy, bumbling henchman. I'm looking, <laughs> keep an eye out for that. Or security guard that falls asleep in front of the TVs. I think those two, those two, are maybe, I'll also take security guard eating leftover Chinese food that misses the burglary. Like that's, I think that's also on the table. So if y'all hear of any of those opportunities, sign me up. You don't want to get grabbed up when the terrorist comes out. <laughs> A yeah. Paul Terrorists Blart come through. They, they grab you. It's like, oh my god, my yeah. food. 
<laughs> so was it directed by somebody named Camille? Do you know? I actually do not remember the director's name. <laughs> He's trying hard not to. No, he just showed up. He just showed up. He got in the chair. I just look. Was dead. That's the thing. I'm a professional. You know, I just I show up and yeah. I do my. I wasn't there to network. I was there to yeah. to be the best zombie that I could be at six thirty in the morning in Middle <laughs> Georgia. I Man, I can never on that. He go. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like oh no i got shot and all of my business cards fell out of my pocket oh no how, <laughs> how did this happen i didn't yeah. bleed i here's oh no there's my social tags ah. i think it would have been more messed up they actually had like an like the person the shooter came in to like a comedy club and then like comedian zombies came out <gasps> It's yeah. crazy. I mean, there's a lot of comedian zombies already, so and there hasn't <laughs> even been a zombie say. outbreak. So <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. I would have been. I think it would have triggered some people. <laughs> Stick to poetry, Sharon. <laughs> oh. Hey, I got shot before too. <laughs> Boom. Um, so one thing I want to ask you is, you're you're pretty um, active on TikTok. Like, is that um, is that something you think comedians should start doing more of the little TikTok reels or whatever? I, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm probably not the best person to guide anybody on social media <laughs> content. <laughs> that's that's not is. I mean, the the answer is, unfortunately, yes. Like, unfortunately, I think it's becoming part of the job. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where it's like, look, all those little Internet comedians that cannot do stand up are getting stand up dates. So it's like we might as well just just try to steal back some of that. That's kind of where I'm at. If I can just if I can just steal back one night. If I can just one Tuesday night that some internet comic was supposed to bomb at a punchline in Sarasota, Florida. If I can just get one of those then we've won. <laughs> just little victories. Well, they don't even need to do dates because they're on a cameo. There's TikTok comedians, Twitter comedians. I mean, <laughs> cameo is the weirdest one to me. I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I, I don't, it feels like pain for friends. Like, I think that's what it, it's a very bizarre thing where they're just like, Hey, we didn't buy you like an actual gift that you can use but we paid $75 for the Georgia quarterback from 1995 to tell you happy birthday. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a terrible gift. <laughs> I got my wife. It, it wasn't cameo. It was the other one. I can't remember what it's called, but um, one of the guys from whose line is it anyway, uh, for 50 bucks to give a message to the wife for mother's day. How to how to how to go? I've never actually run into somebody that has used this. So how did it? She enjoyed it, and it was quick. I mean, you know, you pretty much they ask you, you know, tell us about your wife and or whoever you're getting it for. And uh, he did a good job incorporating it all in there and making it, you know, lighthearted. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you're giving away fifty bucks for three minutes worth of work, but uh, yeah, I mean, I hang out with a guy that does cameo videos where he'll get requests. And then, uh, like, he'll just go back into his room and he'll he'll bang out like 10, 15 cameos and make, you know, like a thousand bucks. Yeah, If you can make a living doing it, more power to you. But I think yeah. the only time that I've, I've really thought cameo is being used in its peak potential was when the lead singer of Sugar Ray was breaking up with people for people. Ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That was the great. I, I was like, this oh, is man. like, this is what technology was built for. Like, this is what when the, <laughs> when, when the cavemen created fire, this is where it was all heading. <laughs> was Sugar Ray saying, sorry, I don't think it's going to work with Jason. Wow. <laughs> It'd be great, great if you could like deliver divorce papers. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so a singing telegram a singing yeah. divorce some uh <laughs> fuck what do you call it serving better get it um you better get it fucking what do they call that shit that you, yeah there you go mm -hmm. yeah i'm not yeah, great idea that. what's up what's <laughs> up guys this is clay aiken and you've been served and there's <laughs> I, I think it's soft in the blow. I think it's soft in the blow a little bit i really yeah. do i think it'd be like man this is my life's falling apart but you know what? I forgot about Clay Aiken. Let's let's, let's go back <laughs> or you to go the other way with it and get someone that they love to like shit on. It was like, damn, you suck. 
Yeah. <laughs> this guy just wants nothing to do with your ass. <laughs> and I want nothing to do with your ass either. So take my poster off your wall at your mom's house and uh, fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> that would hurt. It would. That would be fantastic. <laughs> By the way, Nathan, I love the random Clay Aiken drop. Like, I was not anticipating Clay Aiken to come out of your mouth. Like, I, I was trying to think of past American Idol winners, and I couldn't remember if it was Tyler Hicks or Taylor Hicks. And Taylor. so I was like, I just got to go with Clay Aiken. I got to go with the one that I know. <laughs> I, I, Man, I haven't heard that name in years. Wasn't there a Ruben? There was Ruben. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's in the beat. He beat one. Clay. Yeah, he beat Clay out. Yeah. The first well, nobody one was knows that the... chick. Um, Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, Clarkson. They're all rich and famous now. No, they're not. Well, that doesn't matter <laughs> because we got Kelly a famous... Clarkson has their own show. We got a famous comedian here because he has a fucking comedy special and a goddamn comedy album. Don't Ooh. you? Yeah, uh, name brand human. It's on YouTube. It's streaming on other the, 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 all the comedy all the comedy spots. So. <laughs> it's streaming you on all. Off, the, Danny. It, yeah, yeah it, it all depends on if you want to see my face or not. It's the exact same recording, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, it just if this if this you know if this jawline is a deal breaker for you, which it, it has been for a lot of people, then just uh, stream it and uh, we'll get, <laughs> good to go. <laughs> Oh man. So how many, uh, how many years were you working on the material for your comedy special? So I've been doing stand up for 10 years. Oh, okay. So it's like, this is my 10th year doing it. Um, I, I mean, you guys had Damon on a little bit ago mm -hmm. and, uh, he and I are, are really good friends and our, the guy who hosts the fourth tip podcast with us, David, we always semi joked slash encourage each other with like, Hey, if there's not a seat for you at the table, then you figure out how to build a chair. And you know, if, the table's not big enough, then you go figure out how to build a table. And so that's kind of what this was. I was like, I'm 10 years in, you know, I'm still in Atlanta. I'm not somebody that has the heat or anything like that, but I was like, I have an hour that I'm proud of. Um, so did a GoFundMe, raised the funds for a production company and uh, filmed it in Chattanooga a couple months ago. Awesome. Yeah. Would you do it that way again? I would. Um, I, I think it was, it was great. Um, the, the production company Urbana TV that I worked with were, they were so great. Um, it was just, it, it was nice to like, I, I own all the material. So that's, that's one thing. Um, right now my goal is just discoverability. So if I can throw something on YouTube and just you know beg people to share it for a couple of months, I, I think I would do it again. in in a heartbeat, it was, it was a wonderful, super fun experience. Hmm. So, I'm curious. You're from Virginia, correct? I was born in West Virginia, but a lot of families from Virginia. Okay, because uh, Danny D loves Virginia Beach, don't you, Danny? <laughs> I do. I just left there, actually. <laughs> yeah, I I've been to Virginia Beach once. Uh, we're more North Carolina beach people. Mm. Um, everybody from West Virginia goes to Myrtle Beach, though. Yes. Okay. Which it's a bizarre, it's a crazy thing. Like I remember the West Virginia basketball team was playing in the Myrtle beach invitational and it was like, this might as well be a home game. This is like, <laughs> I don't know what is about that beach? It's just, it's, it's phenomenal. But yeah, I, I, I did a show at Virginia beach once with Damon and uh, it's an interesting spot. It's real. I would, I would pass through there again, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'm getting a timeshare there or anything like that. Did How you was your interaction with the audience? I'm curious. I'm talking to you, Nate. Oh, are you talking about that crazy lady? Yeah. And the crazy. Oh. So basically, in Virginia oh. Beach, you in, you in know. Virginia Beach, <laughs> oh, Danny D did a stand up now. set and uh, she basically almost got uh, jumped by a husband and wife duo. Oh, and not in the good way. <laughs> <laughs> You're always going to have, you know, haters here and there, especially if they're too drunk. So, I mean, she wasn't just hating on me. She was hating on everyone. And uh, I set her in her place and she didn't like that. And uh, so like when I walked out, I totally pushed out and I was like, I need security to walk me out. But, like <laughs> three comics walked out with me and I was safe, but they were like, fuck you and talking hell of shit. But I mean, you're going to come across that from time to time. It wasn't just Virginia Beach. I'm sure I could make it happen here in Tennessee too. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Believe in yourself. <laughs> yeah, I can make people hate me anywhere. <laughs> That's right. You all, every, all of us can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rob, you were going to say something? Uh, oh, I was just going to ask uh, how it went the second time at the bowling alley. Did oh, you go probably, back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. They weren't I there? Did. No, they weren't there. Okay. So, at least yeah. They didn't come into the room. Nathan, I'm curious. She did comedy at the bowling alley. That's where it almost went down. Um, <laughs> what's the weirdest place you've done comedy at? Oh, man. There's. <laughs> He's going to be like a bowling alley in Virginia beach. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> uh, the, I've done, I've done like side rooms at bowling alleys that haven't gone well. Um, I did a, a, a place that was a good, the side room of a go-kart track. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, that was, int- I would say the, probably the weirdest show. Um, I, I had to tell, it wasn't really a show. I ended up having to tell jokes at a mosque one time. That was very uncomfortable. That was, <laughs> But that was interesting. Wow. Yeah, I went. Um, this was a, a few years ago. Um, or maybe not a few. I don't, who knows what time is anymore. But when there was the, <laughs> the terrorist attack on the mosque in New Zealand, uh, it happened. So a bunch of local mosques were like inviting people for kind of an open house. Of, like, come meet us. We want to be involved in the community. So I am dating um, the woman who's going to be my wife at the time. But we're, we're early in dating. So we're playing like relationship chicken. At this point, we're like, I want to seem spontaneous. And <laughs> as somebody who's not spontaneous, it's very important that you seem spontaneous. <laughs> so she was like, well, this open house is happening. Like, do you want to come with me and my family? And I was like, of course. Like, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> like a blast. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I get there. They asked me to take off my shoes and I have dinosaur socks on. So there was like strike one. <laughs> that was all that already felt very weird and very disrespectful. Um, and then they are, they, they're, they're talking and, you know, they're thanking us for being there. And, and it's, it's a very somber occasion. And then out of nowhere, the guy who's kind of leading everything goes. Uh, so it turns out that we have a comedian amongst us. Oh, oh no. And we all know how important it is to laugh during <laughs> times like these. Oh. <laughs> and he goes, so Nathan, would you please uh, just bless us with some jokes? Oh, oh shit. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it was, was a great time. <laughs> I look, I've been doing it. Like, I, I feel like I have a, a pretty, a pretty nice joke bag, but I didn't have, I didn't have one ready to go. Um, <laughs> I, I did a joke about doing comedy in a nursing home, just kind of trying to be like, well, this is weird. What else is weird? Nursing homes. And <laughs> It went about as well as it was going to go. Um, I didn't try to get a big laugh before I exited. I think that was very important. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to do, th- I'm going to do a couple jokes. <laughs> going to tell them, thank you. And then uh, I'm going to leave immediately. Just- <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather do comedy at a funeral than that. That sounds horrible. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, it was very, it was very weird. Just me up there in my dinosaur socks <laughs> trying to be <laughs> trying like still trying to be respectful but like i i would try to make a joke about like spicy food and it just it was it wasn't it wasn't good it, it did not it did not go well needless to say i have not done a mosque since they had not invited me back so <laughs> did they give you the slow clap off or anything just like they just kind of like all went thank you <laughs> i'd like, be so else. pissed at my girlfriend for that <laughs> i mean nobody else who like talked got applauded so i you know it would i think it would have been weird for them to be like oh thank one person round of applause so <laughs> so yeah that that's that's top that's top three weirdest top one I mean, that's, that's, that's up there. Um, nursing homes are always weird. I've done a couple of those. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're, they're bizarre. I think I did a, uh, it was a daytime show at a thrift store. Oh. It's kind of this like open market, this like kind of open flea market thing. And uh, I signed up for the show, not knowing where it was or anything like that. I was just asked to do 20 minutes. And I was like, great. And it's near where my parents live. So I was like, all right, that's, you know, kill two birds. Um, and then I get there and 
they're just like if the sun is shining through this massive window, like there's kids running around. Like it's just and I, nobody's listening because everybody's there to shop. Like it was the most bizarre. Like people were just like walking in, like the bells going off, and they're being <laughs> greeted. Wow. <laughs> like, what are you looking for today? And I'm up there like, man, you know, what's the deal with this? You know. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too many riffs that you can do but you also are just like i guess i'll just go into autopilot yeah <laughs> just wow. do exactly 20 minutes and then i'm i'm done so do you have to keep it clean for the nursing homes um i mean they ask you to but honestly those people aren't they you could, <laughs> you yeah, they lived all of it they know it yeah you could slip in whatever you the nursing home i i think i got accidentally heckled Ooh. i don't think <laughs> The lady definitely did not mean to heckle me, but she was in the front row and there's only like six people that are there and she raised her hand. <laughs> and so then these nurses uh, came over to, to see everything was going on and she just goes, can I go to bed yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I was just like, yes, Ouch. like you've done enough. You're 103. Why are you? Oh. <laughs> like, why do you have to ask? <laughs> Oh, Holy so that shit, was the, the unintentional heckle was just as hurtful. <laughs> and I bet you she, need to write a book. She couldn't hear anything, so she just yelled it. So everyone oh, she could was, hear it. It was so loud, and it got a laugh. <laughs> 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 it was the first laugh that that set got, and it was oh. an old lady that probably did not know what was going on that accidentally heckled me. So, okay, uh, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you now you're in atlanta in atlanta yeah okay so how did you and damon come to me just like at a open mic and stuff yeah so um i was doing a podcast with uh david purdue um and we had done about five terrible episodes it was just it was very bad and awkward and then damon had moved back from teaching in china um so he moved to atlanta and it was like this is this is the glue so David brought Damon in and uh, after a couple months, I mean, I mean, y'all know this when you do a podcast with somebody like it's, it's a sneaky amount of time that you spend with that person. So we, we got close much quicker than really any other comic. Cause you're like, I'm going to see you at least once a week for like an hour and a half, if not two hours. And that's just show stuff. That's not if we hang out afterwards. That's not if I see you at two other shows during the week, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's how Damon and I met was through David. All right. And yeah, you all do the fourth and 10, right? Yeah. Fourth and 10. We try to make we the, the goal is it for it to be the sports podcast for people who don't like sports. That's kind of our goal. If you don't like sports, just jump in. We're not really talking sports. That's just <laughs> <laughs> the sports is the umbrella that we live under, but we, we chase every rabbit immediately. We're not, we're not breaking down games or anything. So I'm curious, what do you think about the Browns chances this year? Oh no. I Ew. mean, <laughs> it, it depends on if karma really exists. I think we're going to find that out. <laughs> Real, real quick, which look, as a Falcons fan, I'll be honest, I'm that's the first time I was like, please, Browns. I hope the Browns win this. <laughs> it, was, it was the world's worst sweepstakes. Um, like, I'll, I'll be I'm not a huge Browns fan. I don't the, uh, Baker Mayfield rubs me the wrong way. Not a fan of that. So if they go, oh, and whatever, that is absolutely fine with me now. So <laughs> just, <laughs> it just kept getting worse. Well, at least we didn't get to the Super Bowl and choked. Oh, no, no. That was that was a moment that breaks you. <laughs> you could have stopped your sentence, Nick, at we didn't get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. <laughs> Every year. We went to the Super Bowl of Super Bowls. God damn it. What, it was the, the Super Bowl of its day. The yeah. NFL In 1930. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And my okay, mom was a pinup model of her day in the thirties. <laughs> and I used to be a good girl. So like, you know, the bro, you are lying. Yeah. Sorry. She's, I didn't she's as pure as the driven hit. snow as she's fucking <laughs> taking hits of weed <laughs> right on camera. I'm a good girl. It's legal. 
illegal. Maybe not in the state I'm in. Uh, I was about to say, <laughs> that's the worst part. Not in Tennessee. <laughs> that's what's great about virtual stuff is you you could be anywhere. We have no, as far as we know, it's legal. So yeah, it's legal. <laughs> well, she did, you know, give a shout out to the state she's in. So. Whatever. All right. Well, that Come find me that then. doesn't help. Mm-mm. Come find Come me. Find me. <laughs> Come find me. Come Don't entertain say me that. in this boring ass town. Don't say that. Your phone oh. does hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and have Siri pop up, be like, find him now. <laughs> <laughs> Found. Calling 911. Send some hot cops over here. Call, call, call that will demolish them. <laughs> Call uh, FBI <laughs> so one thing you also do with the fourth and 10 guys is you do like a, is it a weekly show? The grave? Yeah, we, yeah, we do a weekly show. You want to expand so, on that? <laughs> 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 so uh, we're, we're like, we're on hiatus right now with gravy, but we're always looking for just, uh, just interesting, weird ways to be on stage together. Um, anytime we can host a show, it's like, let's do it. Hosting is miserable. It's my least favorite thing to do in comedy. So anytime I can be up there with two people that are funnier than me, I'm like, this is great. This is, this is, I, I am fine being just a launching pad of, oh, really? And that sounds good. And then just let them kill. <laughs> and it's like a group project. Like I'm getting credit. <laughs> I'm I'm there. I'm right in the middle. So I'm, I'll gladly get the better students to pull my grade up. That's awesome. When I was doing comedy, I was always on stage with people that were funnier than me, and I didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> well, once you get to be a better comic, you'll enjoy it more. Oh, you want to hang out with people funnier yeah. than you. You don't want to hang out with people that are shitty. Yeah, Rob. Just my opinion. I, I show hate up every going week. To shows. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask you about that. How? Because you're all hosts. Yeah, we just, it's really, it's <laughs> like, is it like a Smothers Brothers thing? Like you guys are like, hey, back and forth. Yeah, we don't really do bits. Honestly, like the more, the more it gets broken down, it's the laziest thing we do. <laughs> we, <laughs> we will, we will send each other texts. So the show will be that evening and we'll, we'll each get a text about 6 p.m. Like some y'all want to talk about tonight. And then showtime will roll around. I'll be like, oh, we forgot to respond to that text. Um, <laughs> just like, what's on your heart? And Damon will be like, ice cream trucks are weird. And it's like, all right, let's roll with it. Let's <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. It, it's, it's a blast. It really is a lot of fun. Um, but we've done the podcast together long enough where we can at least keep conversation moving. There aren't any awkward pauses. It's not guaranteed to be funny every time but we can yeah. take up the time that we need to. So nice. So one thing I want to ask you, um, cause Danny's doing a lot of it now and that's uh, traveling for comedy. Do you think that's sort of like a necessity for comedians? Yeah, I think like it's, it's almost more important to other comedians than it is really anything for like comics to see that you're out there and that you're moving around and that you're, you know, that that you are meeting new people that you're hitting different cities. Um, it's also fun. It's fun to be the guest comic in a new scene and like get treated like you're a much bigger shot than you are. Like it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up the secret, Stephen. Just you know. I'm not are... here struggling. I'm not being treated like a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> there are times I'm just like, oh, to be a traveling comic coming through Atlanta and getting set, you know, getting five great shows during the week that I'm still emailing to get on, like stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, it, it's, it's the best way to build super solid material because you're, you're out of your bubble. You really don't, most of the time, you don't really know what kind of crowd is showing up. If you're hitting, you know, it, it's, it's the best way to test your material against people that might not line up with that material. So I think that that can be a super fun aspect of it. I think it makes you a stronger comic. I learned that last night in the Bible Belt in Tennessee. Um, so I'm pretty sure I lost, you know, I took some virginities last night on that stage for sure. They were like, damn. I was like, yeah, I'm obviously not from around here. <laughs> but we all had a good time. 
<laughs> and that's like that's what's fun is it's it's such a challenge when you when you play a crowd that in you're like there's no reason this should work and that like to get kind of cheesy is somewhat of the magical of comedy because people will laugh at things they won't talk about yeah. so that's super fun to like have that place to you know break the ice a little bit and have fun with the crowd and you do sometimes you look around and you're like there's there's no reason this should be fun this on paper, this is a nightmare and we're all having a great time. Um, and then you bomb and have to drive home alone in the dark. So <laughs> it's, a, it's always very up and down. It keeps That's, me humble for sure. Yes. You know? It's yeah. funny. You talk about, you know, when you're traveling, you get, you know, viewed as bigger than you are. Danny D will send me some sets and the intros are just like, we're so lucky to have Danny D all the way from California. Oh, give it up for her. We're so lucky. <laughs> I like you the ones that it. don't even listen to me and they're like, she's from Los Angeles. And I'm like, I did not say that. I did not say that. <laughs> it, it is weird when like you don't, I, I have learned that like, you've just got to, whoever's hosting, I'm just like, I got to give you a detailed thing. Like I can't have you up there making up stuff. Um, yeah. like somebody said I was worldwide and I was like, I'll be honest. I don't know the last time I crossed the Mississippi. So <laughs> <laughs> like, let, let, let me hit the colonies first and then we'll talk about. <laughs> <leaving colonies down. laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, just like this episode. Fuck. This is good. Um, does anybody have anything else before we move to our popular thing? Mm-hmm. Fucking Sharon's got like scared eyes. Look what the I'm just I was just reading up on something. Oh, well, your oh, eyes got all wide. Sorry to disturb. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize that we're recording a fucking podcast right now. No, I'm, I'm just doing my taxes. <laughs> that was like when Danny D was getting hit up on Tinder and it just kept going on and on and on. Just do you get i'm curious nathan hey, since we got we go. you here yeah there you go. when it comes to your host do they like you know put the put the phone off do they you know make eye contact all the time if there's a guest things like that i mean look we're not a super popular podcast so we don't have those problems just yet um <laughs> And we are. <laughs> I would look. I would. I would love for us to be like y'all. The host. The guest we got was not. Was not all there. So, no. We we haven't had too many of those issues. But like, I think it's. I think it's great. I think it's do do what you got to do. I mean, people can multitask. You know, like it's not. <laughs> Well, there was. I can Tinder and do this podcast at the same time. So yeah, I I think especially wow. like, I mean, it's Tinder. It's just swiping. So. And then the messages back and forth, the first 20 messages are brain dead anyway. Like you gotta, you gotta filter the guy, like you gotta filter the people through. So yeah, yeah, I would absolutely say multitask. See, maybe it's cause I have some consternation cause we had a comedian on an Ohio comedian, Ray. There was a moment, all three of these people were looking down and on their phones while Ray was discussing doing shows and stuff to the point where I interrupted and I was like, can you fuckers look at the goddamn camera? Like it was all in unison too. It was perfect. <laughs> you flickered the virtual lights like a him. teacher. Yeah. <laughs> what? I had just hung out with him in Vegas. I was done, man. I was done. <laughs> she was all rayed out. Yeah. She was rayed out. Rayed out. Believe me. I was rayed out. <laughs> All right. Shout out uh, Raymond. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get to this ultra popular thing. Um, uh, Nathan, have you listened to the podcast before? Yes. That's a big fat. No, <laughs> I mean, You're a bad liar. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've listened to this episode. So technically, <laughs> technically I have listened. <laughs> Oh man, you're a people pleaser. Twitter. We can tell. Yeah. Call, call, call. <laughs> Survival. <laughs> All right. Well, we do this uh, ultra popular thing called Inside the Comic Studio. Brilliant. Yes. Before we get into it, though, Nathan, plug uh, social media, plug your special plug. I don't know, Etsy, plug whatever you want. Yeah. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at I am underscore Owens, Instagram, I am Owens, uh, Nathan Owens comedy.com and name brand human on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. 
And there'll actually be a link in the show notes uh, for YouTube for a special. So make sure you check that out. Uh, Deanny. Uh, follow me at Rad Chick for Oh, oh um, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I might be again. going to Texas. Say it again. Rad... You, you cut out. Oh, did I? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, you know what? Nick's a great host. So he will go ahead and put my uh, Instagram tag and whatever else information you need to find me and my upcoming shows. Just find me. Nick's going to do his job wonderfully. Wow. <laughs> okay. Robert. Uh, get my side project, the Stand Up Dads Pod, Stand Up Dads Podcast. I do that with my buddy Mike. We talk about parenting and dick jokes, and the hiatus is over. We are recording Woo! this week, so new episodes will be coming on Sunday. Uh, and if you haven't heard us, uh, we got over 140 episodes you can check out in the meantime. Oh, nice. Sure, Ron. You can catch me on I Am Big Poetry Podcast, where I talk to all my um. Constituents, um, I got over here, Auntie Vice and um, Marvin, where we talk about movies that should be destroyed and damaged in so many ways, but whatever. Anyway, you can also catch me on What's So Funny About Poetry coming in on June 20th. Have some new people and new folks and the same old question. What's so funny about poetry? Comedians and poets together. <laughs> what would be one of the movies you want to destroy? Uh, one of the movies is called um, Talk to Me in Poetry. Okay. Never heard of it. It sounds like something to destroy. It's on YouTube. You'll hate it. Uh, <laughs> any yeah, like big box office ones that you want to destroy? <laughs> oh, big box office one. We have um, Kitty Garden Teacher. That one uh, had um, was Megan Gyllenhaal, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal on it. And there's a f- couple others. Okay. Mm. I have a All list. Right. Check my and go to my website if you want to see that list, restwonderland.com. I got a question though. Oh, Jesus. Before what about my it. plugs? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Fucking A. <laughs> I got a question. Listen, fuck Nick. Nick can do whatever. Um, follow me on Twitter at the big Nick J. It is popping. Uh, fantasy funeral.com. We had a bunch of people die today, none that were on our list. Um, so yeah so the grim reaper blows um we have merch check it out in the show notes and um next month june is podcast month we uh our first guest will be pixie from next on stage podcast and we got cheap seats we got delvin cox experience bad poets and i'm still looking for one more podcast also check me out i will be on porn stash podcast next week and then some other podcasts that I probably should know the name of if I'm going to plug it. Um, so sorry. I'll plug <laughs> it next week. Whatever. Um, all right, Sharon, now you can go. Nathan, what's the, what's the deal with the homeschool survivor? Um, I mean, I was homeschooled. Okay. And I feel like I'm a somewhat functioning adult human. So the... <laughs> 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 the the survival part of it is is looking back and going. Not everybody made it. Not. <laughs> yeah, and you don't live in your mom's basement, and you're married, and you know. I, I am. You know, you fake it till you make it. Um, <laughs> I went. I went. Yeah, I went from my parents' house to other families' houses, but just not the parents. I hit, I was in three different hey. guest rooms, but that's okay. No judgment here. <laughs> yeah, I was in the Sumner's dining room for a couple of years. So like it, but homeschooling, just don't, just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, don't, was, just don't do it. Just don't do that to your kids. <laughs> Cause they end up doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or like, this is best case scenario for homeschooling. Like, right? the, yeah, the other people are like, I wonder who hires for Breitbart. So I'm, I feel like that's how I feel like I survived. <laughs> <laughs> I met other people. <laughs> oh. All right. Was that issue on? Yes. That's all. You sure? Yeah. All right. Okay. So Nathan, um, you've listened to this podcast, but we haven't gotten it to it yet. So, uh, you don't know that we do this thing inside the comic studio where, where we ask all comedians the same five questions. First question, first joke that landed well. 
Oh, first joke that landed well. Um, I had this joke that eventually did okay, that um, it was about firing one of the sign holders. So it's a very dated joke now. <laughs> like I, <haven't, laughs> I, I may have accidentally destroyed that industry. I don't know. Um, but it was, it was just a joke about firing the guy because uh, they bought a stick. And that was that did very OK. <laughs> and for the first couple of years for me, that was good enough. Very OK was good enough. All right. Uh, favorite thing about your local comedy scene. Favorite thing about Atlanta. Um, breweries have become super popular. A great place to do shows. And those shows are so fun and so weird that it's it's great like the scene's really growing and i i love that i have people here that are willing to challenge me um and also there's a lot of comics that are are really starting to grow and that's been really fun to be a part of um i mean Catherine blanford just did a set that's blowing up online i mean damon's album's coming out uh will foskey has an album coming out um so there's just a ton of like super fun stuff like that um, so yeah, I would, I would say like watching the scene grow has been really cool. All right. Now the exact opposite. One thing you dislike, or would like to see changed in the local scene. Ooh, something changed. Um, man, I mean, there's a handful of people that I'm like, I'd be okay if y'all quit. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> some of them are unfair. There was one guy that I remember, I, I don't even remember his name, but I was I was in <laughs> I was in line to sign up for an open mic. And this was after Seinfeld had released one of his last specials. And the guy is just bashing it. And look, if you don't like Seinfeld, that's fine. But I just feel like you shouldn't be like calling Seinfeld trash as you're signing up for an open mic at a coffee shop <laughs> like at 6 p.m. So <laughs> there's something about that. But uh, I would definitely say the humidity is what I hate the most about our comedy scene. <laughs> Um, I'm, I, I am somebody that sweats very easily. So I have to plan out every single show outfit. Um, if I'm hitting two shows in a night, I'm bringing a backpack and that backpack has an extra shirt in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so gross. It, it's, it's not, it's not great. And you just always look nervous and it's, it's hard to convey confidence. <laughs> <that> <laughs> You're wiping sweat from your eyes. So I, I would say humidity and there's about a handful of people I'd, I'd give the ax to, <laughs> but overall it's a great scene. I love it. All right. Uh, next question. Favorite local comedian, man. I, I mean, can I say Damon, is that too easy? Yeah, no, you say Damon. <laughs> I think I like, said you. <laughs> <laughs> like I would, I, if I booked a show, Damon would headline. He is, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, I mean, I got like, he let me live with him and his family for a year. So we got, uh, we're very good friends, but he just, I, I've, I've never seen somebody that does such a good job of going and getting an audience. Um, there's been a ton of shows I've been on where everybody is bombed. And then Damon is just somebody that refuses to bomb or he's going to bomb on his terms. And that, that can be very inspiring. Um, but he just, most of the time he just crushes. And it feels so effortless, <laughs> but at the same time, I know he's probably the hardest working comedian I know. So probably, yeah, Damon, Damon Sumner. If you haven't checked out that episode, go check it out. Nice. Nice plug. Um, <laughs> I bet David, we need to have David Purdue on now so we can see Absolutely. who he says. Yeah. <laughs> because they you, say each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd be curious because you picked Damon, Damon picked you. So then oh, wow. he needs to pick, you know, the. He's the tiebreaker. David's the tiebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> what if I'm he says t- none of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> He's, yeah. Which David would probably be like, oh, I'm funnier than both of those guys. Like, what do we? <laughs> He's got the TV credits. He's like, what am I doing? I'm like, <laughs> they're holding me back. I shook hands with Kevin Hart. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Last question. Advice to new comedians. Advice to new comedians is just be quiet. Like don't have too many opinions. Like just get funnier. Just keep your head down and just get funnier. Um, I know this is very easy for me to say as a straight white guy, but 
a lot of problems that you have in comedy can be fixed by just being funny. Um, and it's just be funny and you don't even have to be a great hang. Just don't be a bad hang. <laughs> it's that <laughs> comedy is not complicated. I don't think like, it's just continue to get funny, continue to get on stage and just be respectful of crowds and grateful for venues. Um, and then when you get better, then you can bash the crowd and the venue and the host. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you hit that level eventually, but if you're new, just get funnier. So I got to ask what, uh, what constitutes a bad hang? I, I think it's, it's people that are either too aggressive about stuff if you're in a green room and somebody's like, we're doing shots, you're just like, man, you got eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not doing shots before an eight minute set. Like, I'm not doing shots before a set. It's just, there's stuff like that. There's people that conversationally try to run bits past you. And that always bugs me. Like, you'll be like, Hey, how was your day? And they'll be like, you know, I was at the mall recently and <laughs> you know, lids is still there. Lids who came up with that name. And it's just like, all right, man, <laughs> you can just say good. Like, <laughs> yeah. so that, that's the thing. Don't, don't run by, don't run bits by comics that aren't your friends. <laughs> that, that helps being a good hang. Oh God. I'm just imagining that happening. That's something I would do. It's yeah, like, I know. I, like there are bits that happen conversationally and I always panic because I'll say something and it's funny. And I'm like, oh, I'm definitely using that on stage, but I don't want this person to think I've run bits by him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the blatant ones are the worst. It's, it's terrible. Now I have to get friends to run bits by. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Sorry. steps. Fine. Is your wife? I'm sorry. No, my wife does not enjoy my sense of humor sometimes. Um, no. She doesn't enjoy you at all. Pretty much. <laughs> I enjoy myself plenty. Thank you. <laughs> My wife is, is very supportive. I don't want her to make her sound like that at all, but there have been certain days <laughs> specifically during the pandemic where everything shut down, where we would just be talking out of nowhere. She would just go, Hey, is everything okay? Cause you're super riffy right now. And she's like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> she called you out. She's like, I can't. Oh. That's I was like, I probably need to go into therapy. Then I probably need to do that. This isn't. She was like, you just did two and a half minutes on like room temperature butter. Like I can't converse. <laughs> so I'm like, All right, well. yeah. <laughs> She's like, you need to be around comedians again. <laughs> All right, All uh, of our roommates fell that way. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about before we go? Fortunately, I have to bounce, guys. I apologize. Thank you, Nathan. Thank Bye you. Ron. This was great. See you guys. See ya. Later. Bye. One of these days, I got to tell Rob, he's got to lift his head because when we put the uh, the banners on, like all you see, he looks like fucking Wilson from Home Improvement. <laughs> all you see is his eyes the whole fucking episode. Oh, he leans back sometimes <laughs> when he wants he's to pet his fucking cat. <laughs> so he's got to go either like all the way up or lean in a little bit more. Like you either got to go full Wilson or, or come out of that. <laughs> yeah, full Wilson, wish. full Norm. Hey, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If nobody has anything else, we will end it on that. Nathan, thank you for coming on. Make sure you check out his special again. Link in thank the you. show notes for the YouTube. Everyone stay safe. Thank Woo! you. Bye. Later. Oh.